I understand now you'll never believe. Sitting here with The Way Away from Minneapolis. How are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing all right. My name's Matt. I sing and play guitar. Uh, I'm Troy. I play guitar in The Way Away. I'm Jeff and I play bass. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to thank you guys for sitting down and taking the time to oh, let me you. interview you guys. <laughs> um, what kind of music do you guys play? We play, on, like, we play <laughs> pop punk, pop rock, okay. and stuff. Nice. How did you guys each get involved in music? I started playing guitar right when I was 15. Um, I wanted to be a drummer because my dad was a drummer. Mm -hmm. And they're too expensive and I suck at it. <laughs> so I got a guitar, but um, I didn't really start playing until I was maybe 18. Okay. And then I didn't really pursue a band until two years ago. Okay, nice. Um, I don't know, like, I kind of grew up listening to a lot of music, like, my dad used to manage a band and stuff back when he was younger, and uh, for some reason, I can't really know, I don't know why, but I just kind of decided I wanted to play guitar, so uh, saved up money, helped me buy that, and I didn't really play it for a while, I didn't, you know, really know how to, didn't really learn, but I had a friend that uh, played guitar, and he knew how to read guitar tabs, mm -hmm. so he taught me how to read guitar tabs, just kind of started playing from there and naturally just started playing with other people I knew that played. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, started playing in high school and uh, I'm still playing. <laughs> <laughs> How did you guys get together as a band or form? Oh, start on Funny band. story. So um... Maybe a year and a half ago uh, I started this band with our then vocalist and we had two other members, you know, a bassist and a drummer. Mm -hmm. And then after two, three months, we lost our vocalist. Then he also played guitar, so we were looking for a guitar player and a vocalist. Mm -hmm. Found Troy on Craigslist. I originally found our old drummer on Craigslist. And then we kicked the tires on a couple vocalists, and then eventually I just started doing it. Mm -hmm. And then we lost our bassist a few months after that. And then we were looking for a bassist for three months. And we, had a, we had a Craigslist add up, which is where we found Jeff. Um, is Jeff. if I interject for, for a quick second? Yeah. The funny thing about Jeff, though, is I, I've known Jeff for a long time. Like, we went to high school together and yeah. stuff like that. And I knew he played guitar, but, you know, I just knew him as a guitar player. And I never once thought, oh, maybe he'd want to play bass. Yeah. Well, Jeff. <laughs> comes across the Craigslist post, and I get a text from him one day going, <laughs> so I just read a post on Craigslist, I'm pretty sure it's you guys. Are you looking for a bass player? <laughs> that's, so, that's, oh, Jeff. that's how we got Jeff, and uh, okay. we recently lost our drummer, but, um, so we're looking for a drummer right now, but, okay. right now it's the three of us. I mean, our, our drummer's still gonna, um, he's still gonna play a, a show in March, and he might help with the EP, so. Okay. It's kind of been a train wreck, I guess, as far as we're kind of tapering off Brian. Uh, it's really hard. Yeah. I guess the only the only way, like uh, the only reason I actually ended up getting involved in this <laughs> band was after I uh, I moved. I was living in Burnsville for a while, and I just kind of had a lot of spare time, and I hadn't really played in a band for probably a couple of years at that point. And I used to read. Well, I guess I still do. I read the the musician posts on Craigslist, yeah. like the classified thing, because I think it's funny, some of them are funny, and I came across a post that I think, uh, I think was it was the former bass player? player, yeah, that made, and I ended up responding to it, and yeah, it, this so, so at one point, uh, everybody was found on Craigslist, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as sketchy as that sounds, we still but, might find a drummer on Craigslist, so just if anybody watches this, when you find musicians on Craigslist, this is what you get. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Both of this. <laughs> Gold mine. Yeah. <laughs> Except no. You, you Just hold a mic. heads up. <laughs> yeah. uh, kind of the bottom of the barrel if you're getting me. But. Um, so now you guys have an EP out called Still Stand. Yes. Right. When did you guys release that? That, it came out in September. Okay. Yeah. How did you guys go about recording that? <laughs> That was also a fun. This is a very fun band. Um, well, we started recording back not December 2013, but 2012. Okay. 
and uh, at that t- it was like November, December, and at that time we had our old vocalist, mm-hmm. and then you know we parted ways with him, and at that point like we had everything done up until vocals, mm-hmm. but you know we didn't start recording again until we figured out what we were gonna do, and then at that point it was gonna be in a different key. Brian had a better drum kit, so we decided to just redo everything. <laughs> so, uh, so we started in it was in April, and uh, we were doing it with my friend Jared Toomey mm-hmm. over at MMI, and uh, you know we'd go in like once a week, every week or every other mm-hmm. week, and it took it took a little bit longer because uh, he was out of school and uh, it was kind of hard to find you know, the, schedule the, the time. time and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so we didn't actually get re- done recording until June. Okay. And, uh, Seemed like it took forever though, recording. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Individually, who were you guys' musical influences? Or some of your musical influences? It's going to be all over the board. Oh, oh man. <laughs> well, uh, for me personally, uh, where we got our name from is Yellow Card. Okay. That's my favorite band. But um, I like a lot of that that kind of pop punk, like Yellow Card, All Time Low, New Found Glory, The Starting Line, stuff like yeah. that. But I also like... Uh, that they really they're really into hardcore. I'm starting to get into it. <laughs> okay. I really like the feeder okay. and the ISHC. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Three people might get that, but I mean other than that, I'll listen to pretty much anything. Okay. But I don't know. Like as far as like bands that are similar to this band that I like, I mean I've always been into bands like New Found Glory. Yeah. Um, you know, got into Blink One Eighty Two. Um, I really like. You know, Set Your Goals was a band I was really into when I was a little younger. Um, this is actually a really tough question. Uh, but, I mean, I really what do like the, like um, the starting yeah. line as well. I mean, as far as bands in general, like, you know, Matt said, I listen to a lot of, like, punk and hardcore bands. Like, we like The Descendants, Lifetime, Bouncing Souls. Okay. Um, you know, bands from around here, like Banner Pilot, Off of Their Heads, stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Here you go, Jeff. All right. Um, I'm gonna say uh, hot water music is big for for me. So, so you know them, and uh, I think my favorite band is probably the Wonder Years. Okay. So, I'd say those are the big two as far as what I do in the band here. Okay. Nice. Can you give a shout out to Unearth. <laughs> well, on the. On Earth, but I don't know. If, I don't know if that helps with with pop punk bass playing. <laughs> Not with that but, attitude. But, yeah, on Earth. <laughs> okay. uh, how do you guys go about your uh, music writing process? Do you have a specific way? Or? Um, well, uh, do you want to start out on that yeah. one? Well, this is actually the first time we've actually gotten to sit down and write mm-hmm. all together. Um, the last one, it was kind of, you know, I have an idea, and we, I pretty much write it and mm-hmm. show everybody and we kind of tweak it from there but like now you know we all live well aside from Jeff we all live together okay. so we practice in the basement and so you know if like if I have an idea or if Jeremy has an idea you know we'd be like hey like get downstairs like you know let's yeah, so jam it out or, times like I'll come home from work and I'll be like hey, hey come down here like <laughs> yeah so I mean um, usually you know we'll be practicing and somebody will have an idea and we'll okay. kind of you know work off of it uh, one of our songs one of them that we actually really like uh Troy just started playing something. I was like, wait, play that again. Then I started playing something. Jeff started playing something. And our, <laughs> Brian started playing something. It's like everybody knew what to play. Yeah, it's so it's kind of, yeah, some of them write themselves. And some of them are more of a, you know, collaboration. Okay. It's, it's, it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. I think, too, though, like, since I've been playing in this band, it's kind of, like, it's kind of changed. I mean, I guess when I first started playing in the band, uh, the songs were already written mm-hmm. for the most part, but I think like the biggest thing was we had like, a couple shows or a show coming up, I don't really remember, but it was kind of like, well, are you going to play rhythm or are you going to play lead or whatever? It's like, yeah, but so they're already written, but just kind of like talking to him, it, I guess it's more of like a group thing now, I think, than it kind of was when I first started. That's good. Which I don't know if that's good or bad, but... No, it's definitely a good thing. Yeah. It's good. Like, you heard the arranging musical taste. Yeah. So I mean, you get kind of a different view on mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. I think it helps too to be able to bounce different ideas. Cause you know, if you write a whole song yourself, you just see it one way, like the way yeah. you saw it when you wrote it, where if people kind of collab on stuff, you get the different opinions and yeah. 
different ways to view the song. What is the dumbest thing you have seen someone do? Aside from all the really dumb stuff that I end up doing without even thinking about it on a daily basis, um, uh, I work at the Mall of America at a jewelry kiosk. Uh, it's called Impulse, located right in between Wades and Bubba Gump, up on the third floor. In case you want to burn. Um, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm just giving people some idea of where it's at, but there's kind of like benches across Sweet from me, sponsorship and there was this guy. Can you guys just, just please help me talk? Just I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. This is what I have to deal with. No, but anyways, this guy it was like, I don't know if he was sleeping on the bench or if he was laying down on the bench, but he was laying down on one of the benches kind of across from my kiosk, and this guy. I just stands up and just starts taking a leak in the mall, just full blown, just just pissing in the mall. And then security comes up there and turns into this big ordeal. It turns out the guy was just wasted, just really drunk. But yeah, he just wakes up, takes a week all over the the mall, and just sits back down on the bench like nothing even happened. And the guy, yeah, just sits back just down. Bets. And the the host over at Bubba Gump like saw the whole thing. It happened. It was just kind of like, what? And then, yeah, I don't know. It was just probably the dumbest thing I've seen as of. Like, if you could experience one thing in your lifetime, what would it be and why? All right. I'd like to experience success. <laughs> um, I'd also like to ride an elephant. Um, <laughs> I guess the only thing that I can really think of off the top of my head right now that would pertain to that question is. Just kind of like, I don't know, where I'm at in life and where I've been in life, the only thing that I really want to experience, like, I guess like this far, is just all the goals that I've kind of had as far as like with music and playing in a band and stuff like that. I just like, I would like to see myself experience achieving those goals and hopefully, you know, everything else that goes along with that, you know, like, you know, touring, playing in a band, meeting people and it's all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess that's kind of... The only thing I can really think of. <laughs> I'm kind of the same, same with, with him here. I, I just, I have a specific. Thing. Ooh, he's got a well, specific. All right, Matt has a specific. <laughs> One day, I'd like to play Warp Tour. <laughs> okay, do you guys have any other comments you would like to make? Um, in my final comment, um, if anybody's ever checked out our band before, thank you. It means the to us. Um, if there's bands in, in the local scene that you like, you should go support them. I mean, five bucks to see six bands is pretty cool. Um, other than that, on a personal level, um, if there's anything that you want to pursue for yourself, I'd say go for it. I mean, oh. It's kind of well. I know it's I know it's cheesy, but like you know, with this band, that's kind of like you know what I want to do. And it's like if, if you want to do something in your life, like make it happen. It's one of those things where even if you're at this age and somebody tells you it's something you shouldn't be doing, it's not their problem. You know, if they don't want to do it, don't do it. Don't do heroin. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, heroin is definitely bad, but I don't know, I guess that's one thing I've always wanted to say. It kind of goes along the same lines of like what Matt was just talking about. Kind of just, you know, if there's bands you like, support the band, support your scene sort of thing. And just, I don't really think people really fully grasp how much it actually means. Like when people actually show up to your shows and they see you play and they tell you that, you know, like, hey, good job, your band was good. Like, and actually, you know, just appear to legitimately be sincere when they say you like your band and what you're doing. Because like, when you put this much time and effort into doing something, it's just kind of nice to know that like somebody out there likes it. And it's just, I don't know, it's just, I guess it's thanks to everybody who's willing to support me and what I've done as far as bands and stuff. And this big part of that is also my parents as well for being as supportive as they did. <laughs> and everybody know my crappy bands in current crappy band practice in, in their basement and stuff like that, but I don't know. I didn't come out as well as I wanted it to, but here you go, Jeff. I uh, think you guys have it. I don't know. Here you go, Jeff doing the same thing he's been doing the whole interview. Oh, he's good through it all. Well, oh, okay. I, don't, I don't have Just anything kidding. to say, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I just want to thank you guys for sitting down and taking the time for me to interview you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And this is The Way Away from Minneapolis. Check them out on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And Technically, YouTube. we do have YouTube. We do, yeah, we do, yeah, yeah. I'll put all the links below, like I usually do, so. Thank you. Yeah.
Thank you guys. Just, uh, stay, stay tuned for the, the new EP coming out, hopefully. Sometime. Sometime in the next couple months. Uh, longer than that. Longer than that, yeah. Summer, a couple months. Summer, yeah. Well, recording in February, so stay tuned. Hopefully, come out to a show. I'm an idiot. Stop talking. Thank I'm you. Ron Burgundy. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> All right, thank you. Support your local scene. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just like check this myself at one. Just, 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 just,